In the last video, we learned about obsessive compulsive disorder, including obsessions, compulsions, and the disordered loop between the two. While OCD is the prototypical disorder involving these features, there are a number of other disorders that also fit this pattern. These disorders are called obsessive compulsive spectrum disorders, as they bear a strong resemblance to textbook OCD in terms of diagnosis, epidemiology, prognosis, and treatment. In this video, we'll look at the first of these OCD spectrum disorders, which is a condition known as body dysmorphic disorder. Before we move on, just to note that if you haven't seen the video on OCD yet, make sure to watch that first. I'll put a link in the description below. Let's use a mnemonic to help guide us through the key features of body dysmorphic disorder. In this case, the phrase, fix me doc, not only connects with the concept of the disorder, but also forms a handy acronym for its key features. First, the word fix will remind us that the starting place for body dysmorphic disorder is a mental fixation that specific aspects of one's appearance are flawed or deformed, such as a nose that is too big or a head that is too small. However, the key here is that these flaws in appearance are entirely based on defects in the patient's perception rather than the body parts themselves, and no objective outside evaluator would actually find them deformed. Nevertheless, patients will be so disturbed by this perceived deformity that they will often seek medical care to try and correct it, with plastic surgery and dermatology clinics being particular hotbeds for patients with this disorder. However, because the problem is not with the physical shape of the body part itself, but rather with the patient's perception of it, people with the disorder are rarely satisfied after surgery and will continue to seek medical care to fix it. This loop leads to a pattern of repeat consultations for plastic surgery with some people with the disorder ending up going under the knife dozens of times throughout their life without ever finding relief. This is not only tragic and wasteful, but dangerous as well. Next, the E will remind us that body dysmorphic disorder specifically involves an egosyntonic thought pattern. Unlike the obsessions in textbook OCD, preoccupations about appearance and body dysmorphic disorder are egosyntonic, and the person does not admit that their fears are extreme or excessive in any way. Importantly, body dysmorphic disorder is not just vanity, as patients with this disorder want to normalize their appearance, as opposed to vanity where the goal is to make yourself look better than others. The D will remind us of the disabling nature of this disorder, as patients are not only distressed by the perceived flaw, but will also spend significant amounts of time trying to correct or hide it. Like in OCD, patients can spend upwards of 8 or 12 hours per day on this, preventing them from engaging in the usual activities of life like work, school, and socializing. Next, the O will remind us of the similarities that this disorder shares with the obsessive thought patterns found in OCD. With the exception of the egosyntonic nature of the fixation, these thoughts mirror the obsessions found in OCD in many other ways, including being intrusive, distressing, and recurrent. Finally, the C will remind us that patients not only try to seek medical care and surgery to fix the problem, but will also frequently engage in compulsive behaviors as well, including body measuring, mirror checking, excessive grooming, and reassurance seeking, all of which are aimed at hiding, fixing, or reducing the stress related to the perceived flaw. However, just like no amount of surgery will make the fixation go away, no amount of reassurance or covering up can convince the person that the features are not deformed. Just like in OCD, the feeling of knowing that the defect has been fixed or hidden never comes. Body dysmorphic disorder is relatively rare and is found in only around 1-2% of the population. However, its prevalence may be much higher in certain settings, making up around 10% of patients in dermatology clinics and up to a third of patients seeking cosmetic surgery. The disorder often begins during adolescence or early adulthood, with a mean age of 16 years. However, many patients don't seek their first surgical consultation until later on in life. Despite societal stereotypes, body dysmorphic disorder is equally common among both men and women. However, the content of the dysmorphic beliefs tends to vary between the genders, with men being more likely to perceive parts in themselves as being too small, most often their muscles or genitals, while women are more likely to perceive body parts as being too large or disfigured, such as their nose or ears. Without treatment, body dysmorphic disorder tends to remain and become chronic, with less than 10% of people experiencing remission within one year. However, with treatment, patients with this disorder can often do quite well and return to some semblance of normalcy. Treatment of body dysmorphic disorder is the same as for OCD, with CBT being very helpful and serotonin-boosting medications being effective as well, though to a lesser extent than CBT. However, because the core thought patterns of this disorder are egosyntonic 
it can sometimes be difficult to engage the patient in treatment. So that's body dysmorphic disorder in a nutshell. Take a moment to make sure you understand exactly how this disorder fits into the same pattern as OCD, as this will help you get practice for when we cover other OCD spectrum disorders in future videos. To learn more about this disorder, as well as psychiatry as a whole, consider picking up my book Memorable Psychiatry on Amazon. You can also subscribe to my channel to be notified of future video releases. Until next time, I wish you all the best in your studies.